Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today's subject is a guy that I really, really hate, but I also really, really respect, and that's TJ Watt. This guy continues to dominate the Ravens' O-line every time we play them, whether we win or lose. He's always an issue in disrupting our offense. Let's take a look at four plays on how he did that Sunday. Roll the intro. Before we get started with the film, a few housekeeping things. If this is your first time here, and you know we have good content because it's the Ravens. <laughs> it's most of the time it's fire. Um, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you can be notified when they drop. And also, if you really like the content, like it. Like some more important than food and water, according to my um, the guy that got me started in this watch. So uh, you know, the like helps helps you with the algorithm. So like the video. Um, let's dive right into it, man. T.J. White with his thinking. You know what? Start off with this very first play here. Here's Watt right here. So let's just, he always, even when they had him and Bud Dupree, they would always attack the mesh point. This time, just, just take a look at it, then we'll talk about it. The car is going to come back across. Whiff. You know, when you're running, it's a split zone. You run split zone, you got to come off the butt and attack the first thing that show up. Who did he think he was going to block? Who did he think he was going to block? Like, you see the angle, adjust your angle. But he whiffs, and he's able to get Gus around the waist before he can get started. And we know it, Gus got to get, you know, a step or two in before he can kind of get his momentum going. He got Gus on his second step, made the tackle. Let's look at the end zone view of it. I just, I mean, who is Ricard blocking? And if you watch the whole tape from the All-22 version, you'll see Ricard bang on number 48, I think that is, but not T.J. Watt. Just watch. You see him coming. Adjust your angle. Adjust your angle. And you ain't even. You don't even have to be a big blow. Just enough to let Gus get down here. And look at that. Just enough. That's what that's this is what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm probably gonna get on the tangent a little bit. But on offense, this is why offense is so so hard. On offense, everybody up here has to do their job. This is a perfect example of what I'm gonna say. Everybody up here has to do their job. But when you go on defense, it don't take but one person to FSU, and then you're gonna have a great play. And the only person on this this play that FSU is TJ Watt. And it's a tackle for no gain, I think. Or loss. Everybody else blocked. Everybody else blocked where they need to be. One person screwed up. That's why on offense, you got to have all 11 guys doing their thing. On defense, it don't take one person to make an outstanding play to make your defense look good. Let's keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Second quarter, 237-6. Oh, let's find what. There he is right here. Same position. Now, I will say a lot of his reps came against Morgan Moses, and Morgan Moses had a, maybe two or three good pass rush reps against him. But for the most part, this cat was – he wasn't as dominant as he's been in the past. And I will say that. There have been plays where he would damn near make every play on a three and out. But, again, same person. What? What is – Ricard don't like this dude? Are you scared of him or what? You see him right there. And he let him get underneath. But great job by J.K. of bouncing off of him and keeping his balance. But, I mean, no help to his blockers. With T.J. causing all this disruption, other people can start to run to the ball. They can start running to the ball and, you know, in a pursuit. Ben passes him up because Ben has the, the second level guy. Records the kick out, man. What are you, bro? 
TJ Watt did a good job of wrong shoulder in there. He's trying to he's trying to spill it if at all, but I think he's trying to make the tackle. TJ Watt don't care about spilling nothing. He's trying to get in there and make the tackle. And he technically he should have. Ricard got a little bit on him. I think JK got a nice, nice stiff form on him too to kind of help it out. But again, if Ricard kicks him out, no telling what we can have going on up here. Cause look at that space. I mean, Powell's would probably end up blocking this dude, and you still got Andrews on a good block. You got um who is that? Is that Macari? Macari on a good down block. You, you keep it out the gate. But you at least you gotta block this dude. Got to. At least put something on him. He's making you look crazy. Third quarter, 10.38 left. That's fine. All right, down in his, in his track stands. In his, in his pass rush track stands. That's his, that's his track stands. To get after the QB. Mmm. Mmm. Did he get a sack? No. <laughs> Is that a pressure? You got darn right. You got darn right. And like I said previously, Moses had a few good pass rush reps. This ain't one of them. He almost don't even break stride. Set him up with speed. Gets that dip. The rip. Now you pass him now. Once he get to that point right there, it's over. All you can do is pretty much hold him or just try to try to block him past the QB. But he don't have the leverage to do that because TJ is so far up under him. Look at look how low he is. So low. Gets right up under that arm. Now it's just a run to the quarterback. Just run to the quarterback. Got to have an answer for that dude some kind of way. I even said it on, I think, one of the, uh, maybe the round table. What they did for, for, for Lele when he had to block Miles Garrett or whoever that was he had to block. Um, maybe it was Von Miller or whoever. They that's they should have probably should have did with T.J. White. But again, <laughs> untouched, no stride broken for a sack. But we know Moses is not the greatest. Not the greatest uh, pass blocker. We know this going in already. But this is, this guy, he don't just do this to Morgan Moses. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. He does it to everybody. Almost everybody. Moses can't even get there because he slid out to this wide, wide technique. But my thing is, you know how dangerous he is. Why not send him out there to bump him? Then let him go on his route wherever he's going. You, 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 we talking bad about Morgan Moses and Morgan Moses is not an all-star. He's not a, you know, a pro bowler. You're not helping this guy out be successful by making him have to block this cat from way out here with no help. All he got to do is run this alley. And if Snoop drops back any more than he's supposed to, he don't even have to change his, his uh, direction. See, he never even changed direction. This is a straight line. Moses can't even get there. He opened up. He didn't even, that's not even a normal pass set. He opened up because he knew how wide he was, how fast he was, and he still couldn't get there. So right now, Moses is pretty much just running to try to run and pass. He still can't get that rip. Getting that shoulder by. Right there. Ain't, ain't nothing he can do now. Snoop not even looking. Bye out. Good thing he ain't fumble. Good thing he ain't fumble. But this dude has been a problem for... The past three to four years, and depending on how healthy and how long he stays in Pittsburgh, probably going to be a problem for a time to come. Plays hard, has great technique, and um, again, he don't just do it to Morgan Moses. He does this to a bunch of premier tackles in the NFL. So we got to figure out a way to neutralize him, and especially since he don't have a star on the other side. When he had Dupree on the other side, it was even worse because him and Dupree would just crash the mesh point, and we know what to do. So, again, T.J. Watt is continuing to pick to, to do the things he did. He's continuing to dominate the Ravens' offensive line, and some kind of way, next year or the year after, hopefully, whoever the new person is, if there's a new person, wink, wink, um, can figure out a way to slow him down, and so we can, you know, have a decent run game or a decent pass game. But 
I ain't going to keep dwelling on this, man. This is Coach Evans from Slip the Tally Films. Thank you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And again, appreciate you. Appreciate you. For, appreciate you. And um, to Hamlin, we ain't forgot about you, buddy. We're still praying for you. Peace.